Hey, what's up, guys? I am here with another video. So, Arlenators, I'm here with Alyssa. And we are about to talk about the whole Pokemane situation again. We're about to react to PewDiePie stop doing this. So in this video, I heard that PewDiePie is basically talking about um, content creators that abuse the DMCA claim system, which is a copyright claiming system, to take down in French copy copyrighted work out of videos. Now this system's been around on YouTube since like I think 2008 and they've been they introduced this system to keep from people like stealing people's stuff but there's a loophole around it and if it's within fair use law and you're using clips and pieces and commentating over the content like a reaction video or a gaming video then it is not against the law and you cannot be sued or held accountable for using someone else's content if it's transformative in nature. But you have people like Pokey and Veronica who want to abuse the system. So let's go all in. Check it out. Okay, that's ironic because Ray William Johnson does exactly what I do when it comes to reacting to videos. Maybe it's a little different. And Alenity, we all know what happened to her. She got exposed for selling bras on their emails. Now there's nothing inherently wrong about copy striking, okay? But I think the motivation behind these copyright strikes is um, worth mentioning at least. Recently, James Key made a video talking about how his channel face getting sh almost shut down uh, because he got a copyright strike over someone not liking what he said in the video. Now, I personally have a lot of experience with copyright, and I think it's uh, for the best interest of everyone on this site that uh, we talk about this in today's video, and also so I can get more watch time. So, do keep watching, guys. The first which thought is Ray William Johnson. Remember Ray? Ray William Johnson copyright striked a channel called Rupert. Ray William Johnson himself, I'm pretty sure, took down the video. Now, I have no idea why he did, but I checked the claim. He claimed the entire video, the 12 minutes, the entire thing. So the outro was his, the original bits I put in were his, the parts where we stopped were his. Now, normally I would find an appeal, obviously, but the thing is, if he's taking on the whole video, and then he just looks at the appeal, and he fucking takes it down, that's a copyright strike on my ass. There's no real good parts of this. So the title of the video that was taken down by Ray William Johnson was, interestingly, Ray William Johnson thinks he can sing, and it was basically a video mocking Ray William Johnson. See, that's the problem. If people would use the system correctly, there would be no problem. If someone is re-uploading your videos, I get it. Take it down. It's not theirs. He literally took down a video for like someone saying he can't sing. At the end of the day, that's not even your content. The system was built so if people re-upload an entirety of your work, I'm talking the full video, not clips, now, bits and pieces for commentary, I'm talking like actually taking your stuff, downloading it, and just re-uploading it. That's why the system was created. But you guys are abusing it. Nonsense, old singing career, or his old music, essentially. And it begs the question, would this video have been taken down if it was called Ray William Johnson Sings Like an Angel? Ray William Johnson, underrated musical genius. I don't think so. Okay, now the video is back up again, so I assume they resolved this. But I think it's important to note that this didn't just get resolved because Waverly Johnson thought to himself, maybe I shouldn't have taken down that video. I'll remove the claim. No, it got, it, 
most likely thanks to a lot of YouTubers raising their voice and helping this channel out, and a lot of public outrage on Twitter, the copyright claim got removed. I find this extremely hypocritical coming from someone that even went to court to fight for fair use. Ray William Johnson, who made a career essentially from other people's content, reacting to it, adding their own commentary to it, just like Hoover did. Now, to be fair, I appreciate that Ray William Johnson took down the claim. I also can't say for sure what the motivation behind the claim was originally. I can't say for a fact that it was because people were ridiculing him. I think what we'll find today here is a common theme. People just didn't like what was in the video. Therefore, it was taken down. I already know example of validity, but I'll bring it up because I think it's important nonetheless. This, this is so annoying. Stupid Twitch thoughts. I feel like they, they win over me, okay? And they're not gonna win over me. Stupid <laughs> Twitch thoughts. No. Seriously? He just said that? I'm gonna copy strike this guy. Just for that word, I'm gonna copy strike him. Yo! So I didn't even call Alinity a Twitch thought, I just used a word basically. That was enough for her to think, oh, I'm gonna claim the revenue out of that video. And it, I think this revealed the second problem with the copyright strikes. They sent me $700 last month from copy strike hitting people. Good money. So this revealed the second problem with copyright strike, which is so the they motivation do for, the money. for monetary games. Man. That's fucked up too. Yeah, yeah that gets me thinking like what if Pokemon was doing that too? Pokey, the girl, the Asian yeah. girl? Like what if she was doing that? Like taking revenue from channels just because she could. Right. Good money. So this revealed the second problem with copyright strike, which is the motivation for monetary games of striking other people's content. Basically, if you claim a video, you get all that revenue from that video. So Alinity here tried to use the motivation of, he used a bad word against me, so therefore, I, all that revenue in that video, that's mine now. Thank you very much. My revenue? Oh, I was in that person's video? <laughs> yes! I mean, it's basically theft. And there's so many companies that partner up with streamers specifically, just so they can claim re-uploaded content on YouTube. Which in a way I can understand, but I also find it extremely ironic because usually streamers' commentary is just them sitting there. They're not adding anything to it. I don't even know why people bother re-uploading these. At least YouTubers can argue that their work is transformative. Understand each other, the world will be a better place. That's right, that's all I care about. I just want people to be happy, trust me. That's my number one priority. Smash a like on this video so you can get more views. That would help me out a lot. Thank you very much for watching. Make sure to hit sponsor. Because <laughs> so sponsor. basically this dude's sitting there just drinking water, but he's not adding anything to it like we are. Like, he's not saying anything. <laughs> it's so uh... funny. So you can see that, and uh, that's it for me for now. Thank you guys so much for watching. He's we'll literally guys. sitting there. He's not saying <laughs> anything. <laughs> Man, it's just, they just be so dumbfounded when they, hey, when they hey, do Shroud, stuff like this. Hey, hit subscribe, goddammit! What are you doing? I'm not here to call Shroud out, okay? On anything else but him subscribe. Third example, Exhibit C, Veronica Way. Disappointing. I thought I gave her the benefit of the doubt, but uh, basically she striked the channel to the point that it almost got deleted. Why? Why? Because she didn't like what that channel's content was about her. She didn't like how the video was making fun of her, and she didn't like how people watching the video making fun of her was making even more fun of her, essentially. Have you ever heard this saying in life when people say, stop caring what people say because they're gonna, someone's always gonna have something to say about you? Yep. Yep. Like, that alone should, well, like... And again, it's like, also another thing, what comes around, goes around. So, like, if you're out here talking about other people's videos, yeah. people are going to be out there talking about your videos. It's, man, <laughs> maybe you need to stop getting yourself about her. Yeah, they just get so sensitive. Like, they... I want to show them that it's okay to stand up for yourself. And she don't, under she don't understand why she's single. You're single for a reason. You're si <laughs> you're single for a reason. So I made a video of me making fun of myself. 
literally a video of me making fun of myself to show people, you know, if anyone's going to be allowed to make fun of me, it's going to be me. So this reveals another big problem, in my opinion, which is fairly similar she to the Pokemon. Fire she just added fire Exhibit D, Pokemon. Fire. She striked this video That's called King Surfers no. Pokemon to Butterfly. <laughs> Holy insightful. <laughs> now, I know about this video because it was well, pretty you different. Want me. She's a, she made a video of making fun of herself. And, but no one else is allowed to do it. They, she said. But if anyone, just, yeah. no, but the logic in that. If you make a video of yourself, post it up on the internet. For everyone to see. It's going to give people more to talk about. <laughs> more? <laughs> she did that. She just added fuel to the fire. She's like, Literally. it's like pouring gasoline. Yes. <laughs> I mean, I understand, oh, like, God. you laugh with them instead of having them to laugh at you, but you don't make fun of yourself. To, like, no. It literally makes me lose brain cells, like, every time yeah, I watch it. <laughs> there's, there's no logic in that, but okay. Where my YouTube. There was basically a Twitter feud between Keemstar and Pokemon. Uh, they uploaded videos to each other. I don't know, because Keemstar is illiterate, and for some reason, Pokemon decided, yeah, I'll make a video. Now that, nevertheless, someone decided to put these two videos in together and upload it on YouTube. Then the YouTube algorithm thought, oh, this is an interesting video that people want to watch, and pushed it everywhere. So basically, this Twitter drama became an even bigger drama thanks to the YouTube algorithm. So in a way, I can understand why you want to take down this video, because this selected thing blows up and becomes even bigger thanks to YouTube's system being kind of stupid. At least I can somewhat understand the motivation of trying to take down that video. But the problem here, and the same problem that goes with every single example that I've brought up in this video, is that you're just drawing more attention to it. It's a strike and effect every single time. The more you try and hide something, the more people are going to find out about it. Sure. That's what brought all these examples to light. And I think what bothers me most of all out of all of these is the hip hypocrisy. You know, Ray William Johnson went to court for fair use, but strikes another channel's content for uploading his. Okay, all these people that I brought up today have examples of using other people's content for their own content. They could all get copyright striked just the same way they copyright strike other people or claim their videos. I don't know exactly what the percentage is, but I, I would say 90% of content on the internet, or at least on YouTube and Twitch, isn't 100% original content. It's it's commentary, it's reactions, it's reviews, it's gameplay. I mean, people tell me all the time, oh, just make original content. Well, guess what? Every single gaming channel is not original content. They're reacting to someone else's video game. It's someone else's content. They don't own the rights to it, just the same way uh, with any other reaction. But it's fair use because it's transformative work, because you're adding your commentary to it. Remember when Sean Vanneman decided to give me a DMCA takedown, a copyright strike, because he didn't like what I said in a live stream that had nothing to do with his game? Despite the fact that they give public permission on their website, you're free to use our game. So basically, they can revoke that at any given time. If anyone, if you have permission to use someone's content, they can still give you a copyright strike, because basically YouTube doesn't pay attention to any of that. I feel pretty confident that if I took uh, Sean Vanneman to court or his company, to fight this claim, which is basically what a DMC takedown in, in titles, if I fight against it, that I feel confident that I would win that, and wasting him and his company time and money, well, my time as well, obviously. It's not cheap either, I mean, H2H3 went to court and it cost them, what, hundreds of thousands of dollars, fifty thousand dollars, I think they held up a check for it. But the problem here is that YouTube sways so insanely heavily towards the one making the claim. The way the system works, and I'll explain this for the hundredth time, I'm sorry for always doing it, you can either get a claim or a copyright strike. If the video gets claimed, the video saves up, but they take all the revenue. If you get a copyright strike, the video goes down, but they still take all the revenue. If a video gets claimed, you as a creator have the choice to dispute that claim and say, no, you're wrong for doing this claim. And it's basically solely up to the one making the claim to say, mm, actually, no, I'm right. So you're not just getting money, but you also dictate whether you're right or wrong. The system is... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, again, okay, I know. So that's why we say, don't even use it. Leave the system alone because it's so fucked up. 
it's not a good system. YouTube probably themselves know this, but that's the only way YouTube can exist. So the best thing is just not to use the system, really. Because it's so fucked up, but it was the only way that YouTube could exist. So to where they didn't have legal liability. So yes, when someone makes a claim on your video, they get to decide whether they can keep the money or not. What? <laughs> yeah, they like, okay, they make a claim, right? And you dispute that claim. And they'll see that dispute and they can either give you, they got, I think there's three things they can do. They can decide it. To let you keep the video, keep the video up and make money from it. Uh -huh. Give you a copyright strike. If you get three strikes on your channel, you're gone. I've had two on mine at once before it was scary. And then there's a third option. They can uh, just uh, decide to let your video stay up and keep all the money. So like no, no matter what, there's no way in the dispute where you have the option to appeal to get your money back. Do you see what I'm saying? Like yeah. the system is built heavily towards the claimant versus the person getting the claim. But I think that's really stupid because they should have a little thing where it sends to people that controls YouTube and they can make a decision on whether or not that person gets their money back or not. And yeah, there's some cases where the re there's been reviews in some cases where YouTube during an appeal will favor in you, but for the most part, you're not gonna win. <laughs> it's sad to say though. So messed up. And if you say no twice to the cl uh, to the claim, it automatically goes to a copyright strike. See, so I didn't even know that. As a creator, if you get a claim, you're you're pretty screwed. But if you're the one making the claim, there's basically no repercussions. I mean, you could claim whatever you want. YouTube. Yeah. So you could go and claim a bunch of videos right now, even if they're not yours. Put a fake name, claim, and no matter what happens, even with the dispute, you know you're gonna get the money. But here's one other thing that people don't understand about the system. There is legal repercussions to the system. So let's say the reason why the system's like that and it leans so heavily on the claim, the claimant, the person who's making the claim, is because when they make that claim, they um, even though they get the money either way, if they say, you know, if you say no and they say fuck that we're still gonna keep the money no matter what they still get the money right you can legally sue them that's within legal grounds to sue them so that's why they let them get the money because if you have the backing to sue them back it's all open field because you have legal proof that you disputed a claim and they still took the money even though you appealed to dispute it and now that's within legal grounds. You can actually take them to court. But here's the problem. Most people on YouTube are average Joes not making a lot. Mm -hmm. So it's still a fucked up system because most people can't afford to take an entire corporation that's claiming your videos to court. Or just another content creator that's big and has money. Wow. So this system all around is kind of fucked up gonna go hey stop doing that and as a creator you just risk your channel getting shut down i mean that's what happened to james key now because of him getting a copyright strike if you get a copyright claim and you say okay we'll take this to court then that's the only way we can settle this the history of this happening which is two examples h3h3 and ray william johnson and they both argued that their content was transformative and fair and it applies under fair use and guess what they won making commentary on on videos and adding your uh, reactions and all that to it does apply under fair use, at least from what we've seen so far. So if you copyright strike a channel or even claim a channel, you run the risk of actually going to court and losing a lot of money. So it's generally a terrible idea to abuse this system, which so many people seem to do without even thinking about the repercussions, because YouTube doesn't really apply it instantly. It is. A terrible idea to do this not just for monetary 
uh, purposes, but also because everyone will hate you. I mean, the only thing really holding the YouTube system together at this point is the public outcry or the public outrage towards people that abuse the system. And if that wasn't the case, I mean, the whole thing would just go rampant. You also just draw more attention to what you're trying to hide. So just stop. Can you just stop abusing copyright? It's not that hard. Just don't take down videos. Even if it shows you in a negative way, it's a terrible idea. <laughs> Stop doing it. <laughs> That's basically PewDiePie what he's saying. And, um, yeah. Yeah, so basically in a nutshell, like, stop, stop taking down people's stuff. Stop abusing the system. Yep. And, uh, yeah, just stop abusing the system. It's stupid. The system's already fucked up from both people's end. Why make it harder on everybody else? Stop taking down videos. Stop taking down videos. I know you want that check so bad, that little $700 check. Just don't do it, okay? Everyone's gonna hate you. It's not even worth it. You're not gonna recover. No one's gonna forgive you. Stop abusing the system. Anyways, hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks so much. Make sure you subscribe, like, comment down below your opinion. How you feel about YouTube's DMCA system. Is it better than TV system? Probably not. They have, I mean, TV's been a, around a lot longer than YouTube. So YouTube still has a lot to learn from TV and how to go about making uh, it more professional. But at the same time, it is a, the system's terrible. It's a bad system. Anyways, thanks so much for watching. 